Hello. So uh, we are going to here to speak about um, artificial neural networks. This is the Delta rule. So I'm going. The question here is uh, how to select the weights uh, of the neuron. So we got here a neuron. We got uh, these inputs x1, x2, x1 plus 1. We are going to assume that it is minus 1, and we are going to put here the the threshold connect associated with this uh, input and we know that the output of the, the neuron is a function of the, the inputs okay so uh, we are going to see that the delta rule is based on the technique called the gradient descendant the gradient descendant assumes that we have a point here and we can move in this function up and down uh, so the objective is to to go to follow the the the, the gradient descent so to, so we achieve this point here sorry uh, so we can have a, we can have an increment or decrement to x to the current uh, value x0 so we can uh, evaluate the slope uh, the slope of the, this tangent to this point is uh, uh, delta y dividing to delta x. So, and this can be used as an approximation of the derivative uh, of the function indexed in, in this point, x o. Okay, so um, as we have a, a function here uh, of the neuron, which is uh, uh, we, which has several inputs from x1 xn we can say that uh, using this uh, derivative that uh, delta xy is equal to minus alpha which is a, layer, a kind of uh, a step uh, we're going to see that this is the, the learning rate in the in the in the neuron and the derivative of y dividing by derivative of of xy for all the inputs okay so this comes from the gradient descent. So we are going to consider that. Um, so we have several uh, patterns, several, several samples that are represented here as p. Uh, we are going to neglect. So we are going to consider just one one sample, but this is for all. And we have to see what how is uh, which is the p the y. So we can see what happens. So if the y that is forecast by the neuron is different from the pattern that we have t it is necessary to adjust these weights here this is the problem the learning problem so we must have a function e that it is a function of the several weights of the, the neuron omega 1 to omega n so um, assuming that the error we know that the error is the difference from the pattern minus the difference of the pattern and the output t minus y and we are going to consider that uh, the learning process consider all the patterns all the n patterns so we have to have a kind of uh, average of all the errors but because we want to give the same importance to positive errors and negative errors we are going to use the square of the error so uh, we are going to see later why it is more appropriate to put this this one over two in this expression so this is the expression that you are going to use for the error and uh, so consider that you want to, to to sum all the errors for all the samples we are going to use the best the well-known mean square error the mean square error is just the, the average for all the samples of this uh, this expression here of course, the, the y is the is the is the multiplication of of x vector over the weights. Okay. So moving on. Uh, sorry, uh, we have uh, sorry, we have here at the um, the expression. So we are going to evaluate the derivative of the error related to each one of the weights from one to n plus one. <coughs> So we, we have the square of the error, you see here. 
So we are going to use the chain rule. The chain rule says that the derivative of the error towards uh, the weight can be split in this way. Uh, derivative root of the error over f uh, times derivative of f over y uh, w. <coughs> so um, this is the neuron, and we are going to see we are going to help you to see what are the, the expressions for the, the partial derivatives of this one. We are going to start from with, with this one, the derivative of f over uh, omega. So we know that the, the y is a function of the sum, g. So g is this, uh, the multiplication of these ve vectors. So the derivative of f over omega is just x. Okay. So this is equal to x. And uh, starting with the error here. Uh, the square of the error. If you uh, apply the rule, the, the, the derivative of the error over a function, so because of this square, this square is going to cancel these two, that's the reason why. Then we got uh, the, the, the difference, who comes here, and then we got the, deriv the derivative of this difference. This is a constant, so it's zero, so we got the minus derivative of the y over derivative of f. So, the, the, but because f is actually y, so this is 1, so this uh, becomes minus t minus y. Okay, this is uh, the result of the derivative of the error over the derivative of the function. Okay, this is the, the, the outcome. And, um, okay, um, so if you consider now uh, that, uh, okay, this is for all the patterns. Uh, we can uh, put the, the, the output of the pattern, the input for the pattern here, and also here. And so we can represent the increment for the weight uh, using this learning rate alpha as the derivative of each error for each pattern for relative to each input. And this is actually uh, the delta is this, this part here. So this is the, we can call this the delta. And that's why we got we got the delta rule. So this is the learning rule, which is uh, was proposed by Widrow and Hof, and it is best known as the delta rule. Sorry. So um, uh, okay, because we have the derivative of the the, the error uh, towards uh, the the weights each each of the weights. Um, uh, we have a problem that we cannot use um, the you cannot use the the step input the step input the step activation function is not valid because it's, it we cannot uh, differentiate the uh, discontinuity so we have to use another function and one of the most used functions is the sigmoid as you can see here uh, so the, this is the expression of the sigmoid this x sigmoid, and we got a c here. The c is uh, related to this exponent, this c here in this expression. And we can see that um, according to c, we can have the slope of the sigmoid affected. So we are going to assume that the c equals 1 here. So we are going to also to assume that the input of the sigmoid is the sum of the neuron, okay, g. And so the expression. This should be here, here. X G is this one. Okay. So um, now we are going to use another representation of the of the chain rule. We are going to consider three terms. We are going to consider the one that uh, relates the error. So the error is the the the, out, the the target minus the output of the neuron. So we have the, the derivative of the error over the function, which is a sigmoid S. Then we are going to evaluate the, the derivative of the sigmoid towards uh, this sum, the ponderated sum, which is this one. And then we got the derivative of the sum towards the, the weight. So this is with three terms. And we are going to see, starting with, um, with uh, the error, as we've seen before, if we, if we have seen that the, the derivative of the error over the sigmoid, in this case, uh, we got this, okay? 
and uh, so the sigmoid uh, is uh, this expression okay and uh, if you the deliver uh, if you differentiate this expression uh, over g which is the argument we can you can prove that uh, we obtain this expression here and this expression is it can be rearranged as this way it, it, it is equal to the sigmoid uh, times the difference of one minus the sigmoid okay this is very well used because sometimes you can see this as an output uh, times one min minus the output of the neuron. So, as you know that uh, the, the output is a function of the sum, we we have seen before that uh, the derivative of the of the differential of the g towards y uh, the omega is x. Okay. So we got the three terms. We are going to multi multiply the three terms. So the three terms is uh, actually Okay, if you multiply the three terms, so the first one in the left, dg over omega is x, x. The second one is the sigmoid times one minus the sigmoid. And the third one is minus d uh, minus y. Okay, so it is one, just, uh, sorry, just this is the first one, this is the second one, and this is the third one. We are going to multiply these three and we obtain this uh, expression, okay? This expression can be rearranged because this, this here is the error. So the error can be put here. This is the sigmoid times one minus the sigmoid and uh, tower, uh, times uh, x, okay? So this can, the delta here is this part. This part here is the delta, okay? All this is the delta. And we can so represent the delta as the output of the neuron uh, times one min minus the output of the neuron times the error. This is a very well known expression, okay, to simplify the evaluation of the delta. So to finalize, I'm going to, to show you here an example of uh, training a neuron, neuron using the the delta rule, the generalized delta rule, we, we, the, we are going to assume a sigmoid as the one that you are, going, are considering here, with the slope is one. So this is the, the, the sigmoid that we are going to use. And uh, this is the end function. So the, every time you got one input, uh, which is one, the output is one, as you can see here. Uh, we are going to use the initial weights are these ones for the, the first and the second input, 0 and 0 0.2, and the threshold is 0 0.25, okay? So, uh, if you use the learning rate of 0 0.1 and 100 epochs, sorry, this is in Portuguese, uh, this is like epochs, should be epochs, uh, what is uh, what um, what happens is this one so the error the mean square error is this one and these are the the, the epochs and uh, we can see that um, okay this is the the, decre the decreasing of the error the mean square error and after 100 samples what can we see that uh, okay uh, this is uh, not very close to zero this 0.5 is uh, this is more close to one but it's still far and this also is still far and this is still far okay so this 100 epochs is not enough so if you train with uh, more uh, epochs in this case we increase for 1000 we can see that uh, the error here is uh, the mean square error is less and uh, we can see that okay this value uh, decrease for the first one for 0.2, the second one is 0 0.877, 0 0.877, and this one is very close to 1.995. So if you use uh, uh, now the uh, learning rate of 0 0.9 and uh, 100 epochs, so this is the to see what happens if you increase the learning rate, uh, 
Uh, okay, I think it is fast compared to this one, as you can see, uh, with the same values of uh, um, point 0.1. You can see that, uh, okay, the, the values are, this is closer to zero, and these are closer to one. And uh, for 1000, okay, you can see that also comparing to point 0.1, that uh, the error is, is lower, and of course the values are uh, near the target. This is near zero, this is much more closer to one, and this is more closer to one, and this is also more closer to one, okay? And if you increase uh, the, the number of apples to, to 10,000, okay? What happens is that you can see here that uh, the final values uh, increase a little bit, but uh, not much, but okay. Uh, they are closer to zero and closer to one. Okay, so um, with this, uh, okay, with this uh, example, the weights obtained for these ones, for this is omega one, this is omega two, and this is omega 3, and um, we can evaluate the, the slope of the, the line uh, which is div dividing these two classes. So, okay, this is, you can see these are the three ones that, uh, these are the three, these three ones up here, uh, the three samples, so we can say that this is one class, okay, and the other one is this one, okay. So it works, okay. But uh, as we are going to see, um, okay, this just one uh, Nero cannot classify uh, all the functions, uh, non the separable, separable functions. So we are going to see that in the next video. And with this one, I conclude the, the presentation. Thank you for watching.